five minutes start now. Um, <coughs> okay, I made this clock and it uh, consists of, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> okay, so what I do is I take the, as I think we all do, I take the clock chop and I make it into um, a table and then I convert this table into one whole number of strings but it's actually not what I'm doing so I can delete this one no what I'm doing is I take um, I take the seconds and I feed it uh, selected two times so I uh, select the seconds I select the minutes and I select the hours and then I feed it into uh, my base and what I do here is I took an expression chop and I use the, uh, what is it called, the operation? Divide. Yeah, I divide it by 10 to get the first digit, which is in this case uh, a five, and I use the modulo uh, to get the second digit, which is uh, in this case uh, one, two, three, with, uh, yeah. And then I round everything to the floor to um, get the whole values because here, I get the dot values, which I don't want. Then I feed these two values into another base, which is then uh, used. So I use a, a box and I transform this box into a long rectangular and I use a circle um, with three divisions to create my tips and I use a transform to move it up and down and I merge it into one of the <laughs> one of these ones <laughs> and I feed this one into uh, a geo which is here and then I use instancing and yeah then I use instancing and I use just change the, the alpha actually and I take the alpha from, from a table I did uh, where I just determined uh, each, each yeah so like this one is the zero this one is the one this one is the two it's the three and then I use uh, oh, I don't know why I did this one interesting ah uh, yeah because I was too too lazy to change uh, the dot three in, in every cell so I just use a substitute to uh, uh, yeah. just change the value. It's, um, and then I use a select and just select uh, the number, the column, yeah. the column, and I merge this one with uh, something I also wrote by hand. Is that for the ghosting? Yes, exactly. And yeah, then I use this now to uh, create my my single digit and I take the the translation the X and Y so I have uh, two custom parameters so and this one is set to six and four and yeah then I use uh, do the same thing I just cloned it and uh, just feed another chop in it because here I use the minutes and I use the hour and in this way I created this one, then I use a cam, which is quite straightforward. And in the render, I just <laughs> take everything inside here as any uh, geo comp anywhere in, in this path. Um, so I render this one out. So if I um, would, I could translate, um, then I can rotate so I get a I get an, another more 3D-ish view, for example, or I could uh, change my my view so uh, and change, rotate it like this, and yeah. Um, then I use a blur and a level and uh, composite this one over. And I really like uh, the, the sync type because it gives this one a little of this uh, like old TV analog uh, 
style vibe in some way and then I just turn it red and <laughs> my time's over. <laughs> All right. This is, uh, is, is a bit oldish and it's not very performative. So in, in the bar, it would be in stereo if you would have ended with uh, glasses. Okay. Um, so basically the idea was a bit to build like an automatic clock. And it also came from that I used the clock object for teaching because it's pretty good because people you get constant values, constant changing values, and you can explain lots of different things with it, like instancing, how do you rotate objects, where do you have to put the midpoint, and people can relate to it because everybody learned this, or the elder people learned this interface still at school. Might be a problem with post-millennials because they don't know how to read this clock anymore. <coughs> but for now it still works for teaching. Uh, I don't know exactly how I did it. Uh, the one part is, uh, I'm going to go from the back, this is the stereo setup. I basically found this somewhere, so there's a few values that you could adjust. Um, in the end you have to put on the glasses and sh shove the values around until it works in a way. Um, but yeah, that setup works quite well, so basically the camera looks a bit from the left, a bit from the right. Um, get red and green and then composite it together and the nice thing is that once you install it you can still use these parameters and see how it really starts popping out which it actually does if you have a proper stereo eyesight which I don't have so it's always it's very nice for me that I can adjust it on location with people who actually have used their two eyes and can see what's going on uh, then in there there's a lot of different <laughs> approaches. So I think what is happening is that somewhere here is the clock object, which I split up in minutes and days and so on. Um, up here is some sounds. This was together with an audio artist, so he made little sound files which uh, ring at the hour or make a tick for the second, something like that. Um, this happens. Um, I have to go through it. So, the ziffern blood is basically, uh, I think, all ramps, I guess. So, different ramps composited together to get um, second and minute lines. How did you tweak that? Tweak that? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, how did it? Hmm? Yeah, it's basically all generative. But I'm not sure how I got like how I got it. I think probably by trying out. Now, actually, here. Yeah, I guess. You can uh, yeah, work with the period yeah. to get uh, precise division. So you go 1 to 60, it oh makes okay. you 60 divisions. I think uh, that was certainly try and error to find that out. <laughs> uh, so I have the ziffern blood which gets composited, and then um, I have here. Uh, yeah, this was something where I wanted to also use the moon phases. That's, that's not very proper. <laughs> that's not very proper. Um, then that would be how a tiger works, uh, like a digit. Basically, just move it, to have the midpoint here, and then give it um, a rotation. Um, by dividing here, then. Um, Somewhere I also use instancing for these. Um, that's also so basically, the digits are clear. I think I don't know what this does. It's just decorative. Obviously, is a three D scene to to be able to render it in three D. definitely not a certifiable patch. Mm -hmm.
I don't know, somewhere I use also instancing because you can use the, um, the seconds very nicely to generate these different dots. Mm. It's, it's fairly easy, you just feed it like a circle with as many points as you want seconds yeah. or so, and then you just feed it how many seconds it is and the number, and it creates this instancing. Thank you. Okay. I mean, it's not so impressive like the others, but it's just like basic. What it does is like also the, um, yeah, from, from the clock job, I didn't even bother to, to sort them. I just took them into tables, then I took a text and, um, wait, what was that? Yeah, I took th the text from this select that here, and that's what I did with the others. I tried to build these two dots, and then I arranged them through overs. I still didn't manage to do the null, uh, the zero before uh, the one, and so on, which, which you showed me earlier. Uh, maybe I'm gonna try that later. And then I took this out, I multiplied by a RAM, so it has the effect, the RAM moves. I mean, the phase of the RAM moves with the seconds. And then it, uh, I went into a anti-aliasing top, which goes into an, uh, like a, a converter from RGB to uh, HSV. And then there's the adjust and the hue offset runs with the seconds, I guess. No, it doesn't. It did. <laughs> He's talking about exports. <laughs> um, where was it? Hmm. Can you, is there a way Anywhere. to find the export source from there? Uh, yeah, but it's safe. It's export, not the office. So, uh, so uh, you could so. do right click and say, uh, jump to export. Yeah. Anyway, it did like, uh, I mean, it just changed the colors with each second. It changed the value, so it goes through different colors. It just colorful then. So what, what did you use the NTA here for? Uh, for? For this edge. It gave this oh, output rather edges. Than, rather than the edge top. Yeah, yeah I, ju I just found it out by mistake, so I just kept it there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah, and this is one version of it, and then I play with it a little bit. I mean, this was, what I'm going to show you now, this was the first version of it, and then I decided to do a more simple one, which doesn't use so much resources. I mean, in case you want to reuse it in, a, in an installation, you just use the other one. I guess this one is just for... Yeah. Uh, Hey, what's this? No. I guess it has to take... Okay, I rename this. Uh, no. Alright. It looks like everything is working with one frame per second, but it's actually... Uh, the noise changing with each second. Yeah, yeah it's and it's supposed to be like this. It's not supposed to spin. So yeah, but here I, I didn't. I, I mean, I I didn't realize that there was a text stop, so uh, mm -hmm. I just I just traced these numbers, yeah. and it ended out like this. And I like how it looked. And then I I merged them, like I arranged them a little bit. And after that, I just, um, yeah, I took a wireframe, put it over, and uh, did an instance here. What did I do here? Oh, yeah, I think I wanted to do some instancing, and then I, I dropped it. Mm. Render it out, and then, Yeah, I did the same thing, uh, like I converted to HSV and then I did this over and the rotation of the over changes with each second. 
and it, this feedback gives different colors to each other cool. thing. But it gives it like a nice look, you know, like you're tracing the letters. Yeah. 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 Really I, I didn't manage to, I mean, I wanted to trace it actually perfectly. Actually, my, my original plan was to build, uh, um, like, can I just, uh, I wanted to build numbers in 3D in Blender and then uh, make a, make a f like select, select them from a folder. But Have geometry for each digit. Yeah, exactly.